Welcome to a very special episode of The Next Frame. Today's special guest is Vincent M. Ward of The Walking Dead, True Blood, Psych, as well as many other credits. So grab a pen and take some notes, because you are about to take your next step with The Next Frame. My name is Vincent M. Ward. I'm originally from Dayton, Ohio. Uh, go Buckeyes. <laughs> I know you're Wisconsin. <laughs> I've been out here in Los Angeles, California for 20 years now. And I can remember driving out here like it was yesterday. Um, wow, 20 years. I had to say oh. that again. 20 years. Uh, I consider myself as a professional actor, uh, host, entertainer. Um, started my acting career back in Ohio, in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, started off doing plays, and now I do plays, movies, commercials, voiceovers, um, TV, whatever is needed to be done, that's what I do. And I also uh, have gotten into writing or, or creating my own projects, such as Devereaux, which is like a new age candy man. Um, I shot my uh, my movie, The Step Daddy, right before the pandemic, um, which is like a spinoff from The Stepfather. I also wrote a book on The Step Daddy, uh, which would be out next month, and also a comic book for Devereaux as well. And um, also created a traveling show called Conventioning. It's all about the different conventions that's out in the world. So I'm okay. just trying to create my own stuff and brand myself and um, have some fun doing it. Definitely, that, that's awesome. Just like hearing the amount of work that you put in, you definitely have that um, like inspiration to keep on uh, like from other projects that you do to keep you moving forward and working with others. Yeah, it's all about, for me, it's all about trying to inspire and motivate and lead and mm -hmm. teach and preach, you know, to others. Mm -hmm. No, this stuff doesn't come overnight. Um, you know, like I say in every interview, I'm not where I want to be, but I'm not where I used to be. Mm -hmm. My goal is so much higher than, you know, True Blood, Walking Dead, or whatever other things I've been on. Mm -hmm. My goal is to be on somebody's series from the beginning to the end. Right. My goal is to be in touring plays, you know, for, for months. Uh, my goal is to have my own stuff on TV. Sometimes you just got to ask yourself, why not me? If that person is doing it, why why you can't do it? Exactly. Yep. It's just like every experience like builds you forward to the next step. And everybody you meet definitely helps you get to that next step. That's something I've definitely learned as well. Yeah, um, most definitely. You treat everybody with respect. Oh, yeah. You never know where their life might head. You know, you might be here right now, but they might soon pass you. And if they zoom past you, they remember when you didn't respect them when they was quote unquote down here. What kind of doctor are you? This is a healing session. And you're gonna leave this place free. At what age did you first like start gaining an interest in acting and the filmmaking process in general? Like did what in, like what inspired you to start that? Getting fired from other jobs. Um, originally, I thought I was going to be a basketball star. I thought I was going to be in the NBA. I received letters from every college you can think of. But at that same time, I was a dancer in a rap group. So when it was time to graduate from high school, I didn't want to go straight to college. I wanted to tour with my rap group. <laughs> we was on the same record label as um, Vanilla Ice. Okay. Uh, it's your band records out of Atlanta, Georgia. Um, <clears throat> We would tour, we would open up shows for like MC Hammer and Salt and Pepper and Public Enemy and Heavy D and the Boys. So I had a good time, you know, right after high school, but wasn't making any money. So I ended up, I was living in Fort Walton Beach, Florida at that time. And like two years out of school, a basketball coach happened to call my mom and it was like, we want to get him a full scholarship. 
And my mom was like, you haven't even seen him play in a couple of years. And she's like, and he said, Mrs. Ward, I know your son still got it. So what I ended up doing, I, I left the rap group, ended up going to college in Chicago, Illinois. And you're from the Midwest, you know, the main job back in the day to have was General Motors from Chrysler. Mm -hmm. yep. So after being at school for a couple of years, I ended up getting a job at General Motors in the summertime. And I never went back to school. And uh, after working there for about a year and a half, I got hurt on a job and they told me I couldn't come back. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, you know, can't come back. So I had to do something because I already had two kids at that time. Mm -hmm. So I started working at a place called Champ Sports in Dayton, Ohio. Okay. Became the number one salesman there. They said, we want to train you as an assistant manager, but you have to move to Columbus. That's how I got to Columbus. Became the number one salesman in the district there and the general motor general manager one day said you're doing such a great job how far you want to take it in the company and it was a cool conversation i said i'd like to have a position like yours one day two weeks later this dude fired me and whatever my manager told me whatever i said to the general manager that's why they let me go three weeks after that i went and saw my very first play i had never seen a play and at this time i was 28 years old mm -hmm. And that day, I can honestly say I fell in love with acting. And I had never even seen a play. So that's how I got into it. And that company, that, that play company that I had uh, went to see, they were having auditions. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even know what an audition was at that time. They told me it was an interview. You know, I should come audition. It was at a little theater called Living the Dream Theater. Mm -hmm. I went and auditioned. I got a part. And, you know, by me being an entertainer, from playing basketball to being in the brat group, I wasn't going to be the weak link. So I started practicing and stuff. Long story short, champs tried to give me my job back. I told them no. When it was time for me to time for me to move to move here to LA, mm -hmm. um, General Motors cut me a check for ten thousand dollars for me not to come back. My point is, what we might think is a negative might be a positive to push you into what you really and truly should be doing in life. I have a gap to scan you. Oh. Yeah, I got something to say. Yeah. I told you to keep your son there. Oh. 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 The first play, would you say what that would be like your first, um, like, main gig that kind of kept you moving forward into the direction where you are right now? It was it was the first time I had to memorize some lines. <laughs> um, I would just say that was the, the open door mm -hmm. because I started doing more plays. And I, I tell people, if you can do a play, you can do anything. Right. Because as soon as you touch that stage, it's action. There's never any cut until intermission or to the end of the play. Mm -hmm. So after doing some plays, um, I ended up going to audition for an independent film called Assemble of Love. I was just honored to be auditioning and I ended up getting the lead role. And then what really made me decide to move out here to California is after I shot the movie Traffic with Michael Douglas. Mm -hmm. And I told my parents, I said, I'm moving, I'm moving to LA. So what happened is I ended up moving back to Dayton start working at the airport to save my money. Mm -hmm. And then that check from General Motors came to help me. And then that's how I ended up coming on out here. Because I just rolled the wave. I'm like, if, if, if I'm really loving this, because it was never a job that I loved. Mm -hmm. You love, you love and have the passion for something. You're gonna, you're gonna wait, you know, you're gonna be patient. And that's the hardest thing about this job. Even yeah. with, I mean, with this career right now, it's having patience. And with, the, with social media, you see all your friends seeming like they doing big things and you're just like, dang, you know, when is yep. my time? You know what I mean? Yeah. But just because we might think somebody is doing something big time doesn't mean they are happy. Doesn't mm -hmm. mean they're making money. Doesn't mean, you know, they're not sleeping in a car. I know some people that's like that. You might mm -hmm. see them on TV right now, but they got a roommate, three or four roommates. You know, they, they got a raggedy car that they might be sleeping in. Mm -hmm. And this is, you know, and it's not me, um, you know, trying to make light of somebody. It's just, it's just being honest. I tell you in a heartbeat, it's been plenty of days that I've 
shed tears, mm -hmm. you know, wondering what's going what's going to happen next. Because yeah. you know you can't keep continue to live off the past. Yeah. You know I can't. I mean I will always be known as Oscar from The Walking Dead, but I also want to be known as the guy who won an Oscar. Yeah, right. You know The Walking Dead. Yeah, that was that was something that I I didn't know what, that was coming. Mm -hmm. But in the same breath, that was a few years ago. It's mm -hmm. like, what am I doing next? What yep. can I do to help somebody else? What can I do to, to put myself in a position to help and mm -hmm. lead my family first? Oh, yeah, definitely. It's like even like the way you performed your character, Oscar, just like showing the heart in him, like he's not a bad guy. He wants to work with Rick and the group to like to survive and he wants to, to become part of their group and be with them just because somebody's in jail doesn't make him a bad person mm -hmm. they just made bad choices bad choice in life yeah and and it like far as me working and doing other characters man i just be humble and grateful to be on on set mm -hmm. that's why I, I i hated general motors but it taught me if you're not on time you're gonna lose your job Mm -hmm. And I, I've always kept that with me. And that's mm -hmm. why I'm always on time. I don't care if everybody else is late. I'm mm -hmm. going to be on, I'm going to be on time. I'm be 15 minutes early. Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's an independent film, a student film. I'm still going to be on time because I had to show them that I'm a real professional. And right. this, is, this is what you guys hired me for. And this is what you should want. I ain't never played it for my life. And I ain't about to start now. What so far has stood out to the most to you, character-wise, that you like you hold dearly? That you're like, wow, that was really a great role, and I actually learned something from that character myself. I have to say, it was probably it was probably a play that I just did right before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. It was a play I did with Snoop Dogg. It was his very first play. It was called Redemption of a Dog. It was Snoop, myself. Omar Gooding, Tamar Braxton, um, Eric Benet, uh, Lil JJ, and a few other people. But the one thing that I learned is no matter how long it takes to work with somebody, meaning the people who hired me, the producers, the writers, mm -hmm. they want to work with, with these people forever. Mm -hmm. And then once you finally work with them, you see how, how much of a bad person they are how terrible they are. Not the actors, but the people behind the scenes. And I always tell myself, you know, after I say, I would never, when, I, when I'm when i in that position, I never treat anybody like that. You know, they didn't care if I was from True Blood or The Walking Dead. It mm -hmm. was all about Snoop and Tamar and everybody like that. Mm -hmm. But in the same breath, at the end of that show, everybody remembered my character. Mm -hmm. You know, and and even though it was some of their first times being on stage, I wasn't gonna take it easy on them. You know, you're 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 already Snoop. You know, I'm Vincent, but you're gonna have to come up here with Vincent once we touch this stage. Mm -hmm. And I think I brought the best out of them because, you know, I I love theater, man. I love 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 theater. Mm -hmm. and I feel like, you know that I helped them, that I helped teach them some things that I knew, you know, that maybe the director didn't tell them because it was all about money and selling out the place. If we're gonna be a team, we're gonna be a team. I'm mm -hmm. not gonna have you up on the stage looking crazy right. if I can teach you something to make you look better. After you're done viewing that play or watching that episode that you were and you feel like the viewer should learn something from that character type of thing? Well, I mean, not really, mm. because sometimes it's not written that way. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's just written to say the lines. Yeah. You know, it's not written for them to really learn anything. Oscar, mm -hmm. you learn something about, you mm -hmm. know, because of 
uh, well, him and him and Axel, they yeah. weren't like Tomas and and you know the rest of the guys. They yeah. he actually had something to live for, and they weren't bad guys. And you know, after a while, I thought I was gonna I thought I was gonna be on there a little longer than seven episodes. I'm grateful for the seven, but yeah. In the same breath, I thought I, I put in enough work to be able to stay there longer than what I was. Yeah. And he definitely. But then, oh, go but, ahead. Then, but then Tyrese came. So it's just like, mm, are you going to have two powerful black men on there at the same time? Because mm -hmm. T, like T Dog's character, like he was really starting to expand right as you were introduced. And then he was yeah, killed. And then they killed him. Like, no, <laughs> <laughs> I, I loved his character and then they he was getting really interesting at that point and then he was killed off because like he, your character and his character and everybody else like they could have been so much expanded together but you know that's i guess that's all up to the uh the writers and whatnot <laughs> yeah so all right could you imagine having tito oscar and tyrese on there at the same time that would have been awesome but <laughs> it would have been awesome but yeah. uh you only see me get shot in the side yeah. You saw Maggie shoot. Yeah. Did she really hit me? No, yeah, that's true. It's like she shot, but it was like a low angle shot, but you never saw your character. She after turned that. her head. Yeah. He was a civilian. She's cool. She's a friend. Am I not dressed properly? You look like dinner. Do you still keep in contact with like a lot of people from each? like project you do on television and film? Lou Temple, me and Lou, they play Axel. Me and Lou are like this. Oh, yeah. um, I've seen a lot of photos of you two together. Yeah, Irony, yep. me and T-Dog, we're, we're, we're cool. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm cool with a lot of people. If you have time for me, I got time for you. If I got time for you, you got time for me. Oh, yeah. I can't, I don't want anybody to ever feel just because they moved on and they, they're doing, they're on another show. I never want anybody to feel like I'm keeping in contact with them because I want a favor or a hookup. Mm -hmm. No, I, I like to tell people I'm proud of you. I'm, you know, congratulations. Cause yeah. I know, how, I know how this, how this is, you know, you don't know when that next job is coming, mm -hmm. you know, especially when you have to audition. Now, if you're, if people just be like, Hey, we want to give you an offer. That's one thing, but to mm -hmm. go out here and have all these auditions, and then you you don't book them. Mm -hmm. That's tough, man. That's tough on you mentally. That oh, makes yeah. you question. It makes you question your your talent, your gift. Mm -hmm. I've been there. Been, recently, I've been there. Mm -hmm. You know, but in the same breath, it's like you've accomplished a lot. You just haven't accomplished what what you want. Yeah. And, it's you know I, I, you know I believe in God. I believe in praying. And one one of the sayings is it's on God's time. Mm -hmm. You know, you just got to have faith and continue to do what you've been doing. Yep. That's work hard, be patient, you know, treat people right. And it'll happen. My thing is trying to have a legacy. I got 14 grandkids. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to have a legacy for them. I want them to be proud of me. Yeah. You know, I want my wife and the kids and my family to be proud. Because you never know who's watching. It's always somebody watching what you do and what you say. Right. Like you don't see it, like you don't physically like see it, but like behind the scenes, there might be somebody looking on, looking at what you're doing, yeah. you know, all that I've stuff. I've had people inbox me and just tell me they appreciate, you know, my post or appreciate, you know, how real I come off and, and it makes me feel good, so. Well, you're a lot to take in, aren't you? <laughs> oh, uh. Hey, have you seen the red-headed stranger anywhere? Come on, Shorty, let's check in the VIP section. Oh, will Jay-Z be there? <laughs> Would you say your family, your faith, um, collaborations is like a drive as well? 100%, the family is first. Um, and second, I don't, I don't know what else I would do. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do anything else. I want to do what I've been patiently waiting on all these years. Mm -hmm. You know, um, somebody was to give me a nine to five job, I'd probably go crazy sitting yeah. there like, this isn't for me. And it might be the best job in the world, but it's not what I want to do. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to I do 
because because when you love and have a passion for something there's nothing you want to do for it yeah. you know um sitting on a set all day you up there eight nine hours you might work a half an hour but guess what you're sitting in your trailer and you're happy to be sitting in that trailer mm-hmm. you know so it it I part wouldn't of know what project. else to do yeah so that's <laughs> that's definitely a drive it's like what you're saying like family number one and just being like thankful you're part of that project and knowing like it will uh somebody will see it and then yeah. they'll lead you to something bigger so cool uh, well, i think i think one thing that i don't like though is mm-hmm. say if i if we work together right and mm-hmm. you didn't have a big budget but you know what i still work with you on your budget or might have even done it for free yeah but now now that you guys you have a production company or a studio behind you to make your project bigger and now you can pay people but now you don't call me that makes me mad yeah because i was there for for you when you didn't have any money to pay really mm-hmm. but now that you're doing good for yourself you got a series and i haven't even got i haven't even got a call to at least audition not even not even an offer but to audition mm-hmm. that pisses me off that makes me oh, that makes me side eye people big time this place is worse than the joint know what i'm saying Holmes? hey man let me holler at you for a minute you got to come up out of those shoes homie i said patos yeah you see that's how i run things up in here what advice would you give for somebody who's trying to do be in like your shoes for example like to be an actor and keep on moving their way up the steps it takes time if you don't have tough skin and patience this isn't for you if this is just a hobby this isn't for you you have to take it serious you know i had a lot of times people hit me up be like you know uh i'm breaking into acting can you can you introduce me to your agent what? I've been doing this 20 years, 20 some yeah. years. <laughs> it's like, no, I can't introduce you to my agent. We're not, it's, we're not on the same level. How about you work yourself up to it? How about go take some acting classes, do some independent film, uh, make sure that this is what you really and truly want to do first. A lot of parents always want to throw their kids into this stuff. Make sure this is what the kids want. Just because the kid might be funny at home or silly doesn't mean that they can be an actor or an actress. You know, and if, if, you don't, if you're gonna do it, you gotta stick to it. You gotta take the good with the bad, the happy with the sad, because it's gonna be a lot of sad, sad times. Yeah. And if somebody just gives you something quick, then it might be a hidden agenda behind it. So just be careful with that. But. If you're gonna do it, do it serious. Be respectful, be professional. Yo, man, what do you want, man? What do you mean, what do I want? Rock and dope, man! Rock and dope! I don't want anything. The day you might decide to quit might be the day that God decided to bless you. And I keep that in mind because that happened to me with voiceover. Mm -hmm. Um, I was, you know, I had to drive like an hour every time to, to do a voiceover audition. I get there, got to sit there another hour to go in there. At this time, I had probably done 70 auditions and didn't book one. And so there was kind of, it was kind of bringing me down, you know, it was kind of like, this isn't, this isn't what I want to do. Mm-hmm. And I remember sitting in there waiting for them and I started emailing my, my agent, telling them that I don't want to do this anymore. And soon as I, you know, I wasn't finished. They called me in to do the voiceover audition. I turned my phone off, went in there, did the audition, came out, turned my phone on. And I swear to you, I had a freaking message from my agent. I'm thinking like, okay, I didn't sit, I didn't push in. I wasn't finished. (laughs) They was like, Vince, you booked your first voiceover audition. And it was with, I don't know if you know who Donnie McClurkin is. Donnie McClurkin is a big gospel artist. Okay. And it was for his show called Gospel Gold. 
And I'm just like, wow, what's the odds of that? It was a Christian radio station. Mm -hmm. And then that day I said, all right, God, I hear you. I never say I'm going to quit again. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's why awesome. I say the day you might decide to quit might be the day that God decides to bless you. So don't quit. No matter what, do not quit. Thanks again for chatting with us here at uh, Che Armster Films, our, our segment, The Next Frame. So we appreciate it. All so, right. Take care. Right, take care. Have a great night.